So I've got uh, a clip here that I'm just going to drag down. And the other thing I don't need in this clip is the audio. And a few people wonder how to get rid of audio. Simply lock the video track, select the audio, hit delete, and there we are. Unlock the video track. We're now ready to edit. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to do a quick render. So the, uh, the clip's rendered, and let's just take a look at the clip, and let's just see what it looks like. Now what I'm thinking of doing is this uh, section of the clip, where uh, this is a video by Maria Taylor. Maria Taylor's holding up the, the card frame, and I'm thinking of zooming through the card frame. Um, like any application, there are, there are various ways you can do this. I'm going to show you how I'd tackle this. So, first thing we need to do is split the clip, and I want to isolate this part with the card. So, if I just use the left and right arrow keys to, there we go, so that's the one. If we select the, the razor blade tool, make a cut, so we've now got um, split the clip into two, play until we find the end of that edit, which is just about there, okay, and then get the blade tool and cut again. Before you do anything else, don't forget to select the arrow tool, otherwise you'll be chopping everything up. And it might be an idea just to space these clips out, and in fact, move the clip that we're going to apply the keyframes to up to the next track. Um, you don't have to do this, but you'll find you may get a little bit confused in the way that the keyframes work. If you just isolate it to, to the next track up, it make things quite a lot easier. And what I want to do now is to find the beginning of this segment of the clip. So, if you don't already know, if you look at the um, this kind of uh, L shape here, shows that this is the beginning of this clip. Okay, double click the clip to bring it up in the viewer. And again, we can see here we're at the beginning of the clip. If you select the motion tab, and if you want to, you can actually move. A lot of these programs do this these days. You can grab hold of the tab and move it anywhere you like. And you can still see the clip in the viewer if you want to. The trick is using keyframes. And keyframes are just markers on the on the various parts of the clip, uh, uh, markers at which you can set um, anything from pans, zooms, various effects. So we've already opened up the motion tab and we've got the basic motion controls here. What I'm going to use now is the scale keyframe and all you need to do to uh, put in a keyframe is press the button with a little diamond shaped symbol in the middle and if you press the button you'll get a keyframe if you press it again um, it turns off so simply turn on and off the keyframe so I put one keyframe in there I'm now going to move along a little while and you know this is something that you probably trial and error I'm now going to put in another keyframe now at the moment with the keyframes nothing will happen but I'm going to actually at the second keyframe adjust the scale slider okay so you can see what's happening at the beginning of the clip as we move the cursor along the clip you can see that we're actually doing a zoom function so what, what I'll do, I'll just render this and then you can see it Right, so let's just take a look at this. There we go, so you can see quite a nice zoom effect. If you want a very fast zoom, the, diff the distance between the keyframes should be small. The bigger the distance between the keyframes, the slower the zoom. If you wanted to do a zoom that starts off slowly and works quickly towards the end, 
you can just use more keyframes and adjust the slider. But we can do multiple keyframes as well. So let's find the beginning of this clip. Okay, and let's try something uh, interesting. And the best thing to do with Final Cut is play around with it. Let's have a look at this rotation. I'm going to put a keyframe in for rotation. And uh, let's go to the end of the clip. There we go, we're at the end of the clip. And put in another keyframe and drag this dial. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. Leave it at that. And again, I'm just going to render the clip. Okay, so let's have a look at this. And we'll get a zoom and rotate. Okay, the final thing I'm going to do, which will become <clears throat> self explanatory a little bit later on, is to use this center um, keyframe. So I'm at the beginning of the clip. I'm going to put in a keyframe and let's just move along a little bit. At this point, click the center keyframe. Click on this button here that looks like a, a plus button. It's actually a cursor button. I'm just going to grab hold of this and move it down a little bit. Okay, let's, let's try that. Okay, and I'm just going to go off and do another very quick render. Okay, so that's rendered. I'm just going to put this motion tab back where it belongs. And let's reassemble the video. Okay, so that one goes down to there. That goes to there, and we'll just play the whole thing, whole thing through. So everything's in a nice uh, widescreen format. Oh, uh, we've lost the widescreen format. Um, what we're going to do about this? Obviously, if we want to retain the letterboxing. We've got a bit of a problem there, haven't we? So the easiest way to do this is simply export as a QuickTime movie. I'm going to call it Song Beneath. Whoop, get your spelling right. Beneath one, and save it on the desktop as a QuickTime movie. So we've saved the self-contained QuickTime movie. I'm just going to um, just open a new project. I'm going to import the file called song beneath one there we go and let's answer yes to that and if we play the track we can still see that it's one contiguous track now however we've still lost that formatting so if we select and go to effects video filters matte and then go to widescreen. Nothing seems to change apart from the fact that we've now preserved the letterboxing. Now, if I just stop there, you can see that the reason for me recentering the video earlier on, because we were in danger of chopping this girl's head off, but I went a little bit too low because you can see the edge of the video here, but you can see what I mean. You've got access to control the, the zoom. You can control the, um, the the position of the video on the screen. You can control rotation and a whole lot more. And uh, all you need to do now is to save this as a movie and uh, you're ready to uh, do further work with it. So I hope that's not been too complicated for you. I should have perhaps have scripted this. It would have made it a little bit clearer. I've just done the whole thing off the cuff. But I uh, hope you find this useful. Thanks very much.